Welcome to part 7 of Test Driven Development in Unity. In parts 1 through 6, we created a heart container to display how many heart pieces the player currently has. In the next two videos, we'll be using the observer pattern to update the heart container based on the player's current health. To get started, we'll need to implement a player class. Let's create a list of requirements. The player's health will be represented as an integer. It should never be less than zero. It should be capped at a predetermined maximum. Extra health as a result of overhealing should be ignored. And extra health as a result of overkill should be ignored as well. All right, this should be enough to get us started. Let's use red green refactor to tease out our player class. We'll do this by creating a base case test in a test class called player tests. Our base case will test the current health property, so we'll nest it within a class called the current health property. Let's name the test health defaults to zero. All it'll do is instantiate a new player passing zero into the constructor for current health and assert that the player's current health is equal to zero. Of course, this doesn't compile, so let's generate the player class. And then, create the current health property. Now the test compiles. And passes. Next, let's update the constructor to use the current health parameter to initialize current health. We'll run the test one more time. Perfect. Before we move on, I'm going to move the player class into its own file. Now, we can open it up in split screen view, so we can see both classes at once. Moving on, we'll need to make sure that the current health can't be set to a value less than zero. So let's create a test called throws exception when current health is less than zero. For this type of test, we'll need to create an exception assert that asserts that the argument out of range exception is thrown when we try to pass negative one into the constructor of a new player. The test fails, so now we can add the code to get it to pass, which is as simple as checking the value of current health parameter and throwing an argument out of range exception if the value is less than zero. Great, the test passes. Moving down our list of requirements, the next thing we need to do is make sure that the player's health can't be greater than a predefined maximum. We'll call this test throws exception when current health is greater than maximum health. Again, we'll need to create an exception assert. But this time, we'll pass in the values 2 and 1 on the constructor. The second parameter will be for a new property called maximum health. Let's go ahead and add it to the constructor. We'll give it a default value of 12, so we don't break any of our other tests. Now, we can throw an argument out of range exception if current health is greater than maximum health. And the test passes. Before we move on, I'm going to add the maximum health property to player and use the constructor parameter to initialize it. Great. 
Now we have properties to keep track of current health and maximum health. We can use them to keep track of healing and damage done to the player. Let's create a new nested test class called the heal method. The first test will be another base case. We'll call it zero does nothing. All it needs to do is instantiate a player with zero health. Then pass zero into player's heal method and assert that its current health is still zero. As with all of our base cases, the test won't compile until we generate the necessary code. Now we can run it, and it passes. But we still need to give it some functionality before we start giving it requirements. So let's add another test to get us started. We'll call it one increments current health. And in it, we'll instantiate another player with zero health. But this time, we'll pass one into player's heal method and assert that its current health is one. The test fails, so now we can add the logic to make it functional which will simply be to add the value of the method's argument to current health. Now that the heal method is doing its job, let's throw in some logic to make it meet our requirements. Overhealing should be ignored, so this next test will be called, you guessed it, overhealing is ignored. It'll instantiate a player with zero current health and one maximum health. Pass 2 into player's heal method, and assert that the player's health is 1, because any health greater than the maximum should just be ignored. The test fails, so now we can switch on over to the method and add the logic. We'll check if the new health value is greater than maximum health. If it is, we'll assign current health the value of maximum health. Otherwise, we can perform the original calculation. The test passes, so now we can go back and refactor to clean up the logic. This can all be done in a simpler way, using the math utility called min. All we need to do is pass in the new value for current health and the value of maximum health, and it'll return the smaller of the two values. This will guard heal from ever setting current health to a value greater than maximum health. And the test passes. Now we can move on to the damage method. But the logic is so similar that we're just going to fast forward through it. While I work on that, Let's talk about the observer pattern. It's thanks to the observer pattern that we can implement player health however we want. It could be based on percentages, hit points, or really anything we can think of. Using the observer pattern, we'll be able to completely decouple the internal details of player health from the heart container, or any other class that needs to create a dependency between itself and player health. But we'll get into that just as soon as we're done with the damage method. Speaking of which, it looks like it's complete. The damage method works just like heal, except it decrements current health, and it never lets current health drop below zero, per our requirements. You'll notice that this is accomplished using math utility function called max, similarly to how we used min function in the heal method. Now we're ready to hook everything up, which we'll do next time, in part 8 of test-driven development in Unity. If you're enjoying this series, leave a like. Also, please subscribe if you're interested in learning more about unit testing, refactoring, and designing better game code.